Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be giving you a detailed analysis of what happens when a volcano explodes. If you've watched my lesson on the causes of volcanoes, you'll know that we're focusing on composite volcanoes and that's ones like you can see in the picture in the background right now. You'll know that they're explosive, quite violent eruptions and we need to understand in this lesson what the impacts of those eruptions are. Are they all negative or are there positives to be found as well? At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe both positives and negatives to score marks. And as always, please be aware that what I'm teaching you has employability focus. You can get jobs using these skills in things like renewable energies, tourism, volcanology, and etc. So let's get started. Um, we're going to focus on a volcano called Mount St Helens. You saw a big picture of it just a minute ago in the intro screen there. Let's get some background and in your notes, if you're taking your notes, then you should complete this gap fill using the information that you see on the screen. So where is Mount St Helens? Well, we're in the United States of America, as you can see. We're in the northwest of the United States of America. We're in the state of Washington and Mount St Helens is south of Seattle in Washington. And when it exploded in May 18th, 1980, um, you can see the area, the vast area of the United States that was affected by up to half an inch of ash fall. Now in class, I, I, I've shown you examples of ash and that ash is quite deadly stuff. It's quite heavy, dangerous stuff. Half an inch is not too dangerous, but as you can see, there are large areas of Washington state that were covered in up to two inches of ash fall and some areas up to five inches and at that thickness the ash can, can uh, threaten structures it can certainly block transport uh, infrastructure such as roads and railways and stop emergency services so it's a really really major deadly event that took place May 18th 1980 Washington state in the United States when Mount St Helens erupted you can see a picture here um, we're not going to go too much into the causes of the volcano because that was in our last lesson, uh, but we are going to find out some of the impacts of this famous eruption. And uh, ash fall is certainly one of the major impacts of a volcano that we've already touched on. So, first of all, what happened when Mount St Helens erupted? Um, you'll see other resources in class, I'll, I'll show you videos and so on, but as a brief... Um, kind of catch up or introduction. You can see here uh, the only footage we have of Mount St Helens actually erupting. And um, you can see that in fact it was not just the top of the volcano that exploded upwards, but in fact there was a sideways explosion as well, known as a lateral blast. That means a sideways explosion, a lateral blast. And that's because there was a um, a cryptodome. That, I mean, uh, there was a uh, a chamber of magma um, held within the mountain that had found a point of weakness off to the side of the mountain. And so that point of weakness was exploited and the mountain exploded sideways. Um, not only did it explode sideways, but it set off a massive pyroclastic flow, which is gas, rubble, lava bombs and dust all mixed together, moving at extreme speed across the landscape and at extreme temperature. And we'll see the impacts that that had in a moment. Whilst you take on that terrifying image, um, look at these three images on the right. From these three images, you should actually be able to tell me or tell anyone um, how we knew this volcano was going to explode because we did know. Volcanologists had been studying it for some time and they knew it was going to explode and were even to give some warning of its explosion. And that's, of course, how we were able to have cameras set up to record it. Can you pause the video here and study those photos carefully and figure out what the clues were that tell you between picture one, picture two, and picture three, what were the clues that tell us the volcano was going to explode? Okay, I'm assuming you've paused the video um, and now you've unpaused it. So the clues that we might look for here are one, the, mo the mountain had snow on its peak and that snow had largely melted off. Secondly, the top of the mountain started to puff smoke <laughs> and that's a fairly clear sign that something's going to happen. Um, and thirdly, 
Um, I mentioned a crypto dome a moment ago. That just means a hidden bulge of magma underneath the mountain. And if you look carefully, you can see a bulge in the side of the mountain. And that uh, could be evidence of the cryptodome actually changing the shape of the mountain. And volcanologists were able to measure a change, a bulging in the shape of the mountain. And uh, that is the other clue that tells us that the volcano is going to erupt. So three clues. Um, that's in 1963, that's in 1980. And uh, that's after the eruption. OK, so let's get into the real meat of the lesson and see what the impacts of this massive eruption were. You'll need to take your notes into a table. In geography, we always think about things in a social way, what things affected people. In an environmental way, what things affected the environment. And in an economic way, what things affected jobs, industry and a country's ability to function. Social, environmental and economic. Make sure you copy the table and then take your notes into the correct column of the table. So first of all, uh, fertile ash. Ash is immensely fertile stuff and some 500 million tonnes more than that was spread over a huge area of the United States. And uh, this is actually a huge benefit to the United States. The ash is very fertile. It improves their farming soil. So that means that they can make more money out of that. So it could be an economic impact. The ash is very heavy. Um, I, I've sh I'll show you ash in class. It's incredibly heavy stuff. And people were keen to get it off the roofs of their houses because it's like adding a layer of rock to your house. And it's incredibly heavy. It can crush buildings, which is, of course, an environmental impact. Everything within eight miles of the blast was wiped out instantly, instantly, right down to bacterial life in some points. The force of the blast and the pyroclastic um, flow that ensued um, just destroyed everything in its path. So whole forests were blasted down and you can see the direction of the blast wave by way, the way the forest has just been smoothed flat. So that's a huge environmental impact. Habitats lost and forests destroyed. You can see that these big old trees have just been snapped in two like they were twigs. Uh, immense force of the volcano demonstrated brilliantly in that picture. Uh, the heat of the blast melted ice at the top of the mountain and, and that mixed with a superheated mud at the top of the mountain and that created a deadly volcanic force known as a lahar. And these flow at speeds up to 100 kilometres per hour, 120 kilometres per hour, and they destroyed everything in their path. They're really, really deadly things. Take a close look at this picture. You can see this gentleman standing on the lahar once it has finished flowing and it has dried out and solidified. But look, there's a street sign that has been completely buried. And that's why the ground is so smooth. The ground is so smooth because... Previously, this would have been a river of fast-flowing, high-temperature mud and rock mixed up with um, the melted ice from the top of the volcano. Really, really deadly, fast-moving force from the volcano, that is a lahar. They're super deadly. Um, 57 people sadly lost their lives in the eruption, and thousands of animals were killed. Um, you can see here this rather striking image of uh, ash fall and it gives you an idea of how quickly that ash fall came about. Um, you can even see the kind of route that the owner of this car has taken to escape from their vehicle. Um, the ash doesn't fall fluttering down like little petals like rain, it, it falls rapidly um, and some particles can be quite heavy and um, some might have been lava bombs as well so it's really dangerous uh, rapidly changing environment. Uh, over 200 homes were destroyed and over 185 miles of road and of some railway also damaged. Now, out of the kind of categories there, of, these are, of course, um, economic impacts. Homes being destroyed are social impacts. Um, the sewage systems were clogged. There was damage to cars and buildings. I mean, it's all terrifying stuff and, and massively damaging to the economy as a whole because all of those buildings are going to have to be opened up again, they're going to have to be rebuilt and the, mile, the, the roads are going to have to be, the miles and miles of roads are going to have to be unclogged before you can get emergency services in. So a really important impact there. 
A positive impact from the volcano is that now people visit the site as, a, as an important tourist attraction. And you can see in this picture comp people comparing the picture of before to after. And you can really see in this image the amount of the mountain that was just blown into smithereens um, with more force than um, a nuclear explosion. Uh, this is one of my favourite pictures. It shows a pa the it it gives you the best I think demonstration of a pyroclastic flow, uh, because it shows the size of the rubble that is contained within a pyroclastic flow, and it shows the pathway the pyroclastic flow took across the landscape. You can see it fading off into the distance there. It looks like a dried up riverbed almost. Um, they flow at speeds up to really fast, but you can't outrun them, um, and. This one flowed at speeds up to 100 kph, but they're capable of incredible speeds as they are sometimes, um, the, the, the gas that's contained within them almost makes them kind of uh, float over the ground at incredible speed. And they contain all of the ash and the superheated rubble um, and they can hit you incredibly quickly with superheated temperatures and basically you're not going to survive if a pyroclastic flow hits you. Imagine that wall of rubble there swirling around at high speed at hundreds of kilometres per hour, superheated to hundreds of degrees centigrade um, and then smashing into you. Um, it's it's in, it's instantly fatal and and nothing survives behind it. Uh, some research even showing that even bacteria is, is destroyed in the temperatures contained within the pyroclastic flow. Um, this is a photo of the py of a pyroclastic flow, I should I should say. Gives you an idea of scale and size. You can see the dust being thrown up in its as it passes over the landscape. And um, this is not of Mount St Helens, but it is footage of a pyroclastic flow, and you can get an impression for the speed and devastating uh, power of the flow as it passes over the landscape. Nothing's going to survive inside that maelstrom of rubble, rock, ash, lava bombs, and heat. So, your challenge is to make a newspaper front page with the headline uh, uh, the, for of the Mount St Helens uh, volcano. It needs to have for bronze level, a picture and at least four impacts. Uh, must be described in full sentences, of course. Really, if you want to push for gold, though, you want it to make a front page with a headline, pictures, full descriptions under headings of social, environmental and economic. It would be good to see some positive impacts and negative impacts. We want lots of images, lots of pictures, lots of gory detail. Um, So some questions to think about as we close this lesson is, for you, what were the most memorable impacts of Mount St Helens eruption? Because there are several. Um, another important question is, what are the three categories the impacts fall into? The table that we drew. And finally, can you also name an impact from each of those impact categories? And those are questions that we'll come back to when we revisit this in class. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it helped you with your homework. I hope it helped you with the tasks that you're doing. You can see me with any additional questions you might have.